what's up everybody it's your girl erica from the classy climb blog i'm running to go get some coffees i uh, just got off the road with the fam i uh, got on the hoodie listen many of you let this break off many of you are like erica you know did you see the brian allen see he's dealing with racism oh even at that level he's dealing with racism uh, listen i heard you and i understand but you also miss important keys. Now, he talked about when his parents got divorced, he felt like he lost his father and he wasn't going to lose his mother. So he was going to do what? Go to the grocery store, see you to get a job. They were like, nah, man, you're 10 years old. You can't get no job here. So then he did what? Push carts back to get stamps, right? He was already a, and there, there are three different definitions, entrepreneur, business owner, and CEO. These are three different hats. Um, what you guys will learn is these are three different terms and I'll discuss them a little bit more in a second. Entrepreneur is somebody who just has a turning mind that says, well, I want to solve a problem. That's what that is. Entrepreneur, simple question, simple answers, solving problems creatively. That's it. People try to think of all these cool terms. A entrepreneur is just a problem solver, solving things creatively. And if you could help me out, drop a like Hit the like button, smash it, and also drop your city and state. It helps us figure out where to do events, where to do dinners. Um, if you're in California, you're in Oakland, we're doing a small dinner for people who are students. And you should see the email for people who purchase products and services in Oakland, near Oakland. They will be getting dinner with us. Um, and that's how we're going to roll. Because people who invest with me, I want to give you the respect and invest with you back by going to dinner with you. Um, at a nice place in Oakland. I think that'll be much a really valuable opportunity um, We'll see if we can fit in LA, but we just don't know at this point uh, Me and Terry will be up there. There's a lot of opportunity. There's there's also an opportunity. I may be in San Diego And able to do something in San Diego in December Keep your eyes peeled, right? So here's the thing the and that's the you know updates for the week, okay? <laughs> so Byron Allen is has this you know little entrepreneurial spirit as a young kid now let me make it and it and, i mean he has an amazing story writing jokes as a kid for the guy from good time Show. i mean like there's just so much to that story you guys need to watch that interview at least two three times and get your pen and paper out now here's here's what i want want to get to you entrepreneur is someone who is just doing stuff a little bit outside the box they are being creative and solving a problem and they used to be conferred with as a hustler. CEO is someone who runs the systems of a business. Okay? Um, a business owner is someone who owns the whole deal. Now, clearly, if you know anything about Facebook, um, the Facebook guy who created Facebook is technically on paper not the CEO. Sandra Byrne, uh, Sandra, whatever her name is, and a couple other people are CEOs. Same thing with McDonald's right now. The guy who founded McDonald's has died, right? Um, there are other people who are the business owners of McDonald's, but the CEO just got fired. Why? Because he slept with someone in a relationship underneath him. I hope it was worth it. That's $22 million a year income gone. So God bless him, right? So those are the three different categories. But if you listen to him, proximity factor plays in i tried to say this to y'all i'm in a hoodie my hair is a little big i'm not i'm not you know i'm not trying to knock anybody but you know this isn't my usual wear but it's usual wear for what you guys see on this channel so i don't have to go out of pocket what you're seeing now is that the rules apply more equally now what do i mean more equally there's a movie coming out called the banker i'm gonna pay for at least 25 kids to go see that i'm trying to figure out how to do it I'm trying to call around little daycares who can i send money and pay for it but the, the key of it is those, the banker shows two really smart business black men trying to figure out how to get by two banks that were for sale. And what, oh, Charm City Buyers, I'll pay to go see that movie. It's much better than the Harriet Tubman movie, but we'll leave that alone. Um, so if you see in the movie, they use this white guy to kind of like make like it's them, which technically at the time in America wasn't illegal. It wasn't illegal to send somebody else as your representative, your buying person. But you'll see definitely what that plays out in the movie, and I won't spell it for anybody. It's actually a real live thing that happened in California. Proximity factor, when I talk about going to events, going to conferences, going to seminars, proximity factor gets you in the room with those particular people. 
that's all that is, right? You're in that environment. What you do with it from there is on you. It's completely on you. But if you listen to Byron Allen for five years, his home kept going in and out of foreclosure. But he was smart enough to ask the lady when the lady said, what's going on? He told her, I'm building this bigger thing. So many times here, especially on the internet and especially on YouTube, you know, people have this very like defeatist mentality. Oh, no one wants to help you. No one will give us funding. No one will give us business credit. You know, it's, it's, it's just terrible out here. But the key here is, is you're not talking to the right people. You're not presenting yourself as the person you're trying to be, right? And I told you guys, there was a year I went to 20 banks and I mean, it was like the fight of the life, right? Like what is happening? Why am I not being approved? I was taught this technique by a group of people in, uh, in well, Memphis, Tennessee, and it should work. Now the last banker said, who showed you this? I said, look, man, I can't tell you who showed me this. He said, this is what I want you to do. Go over here to my friend at this place in Austin, I will not mention. They're hard money loan lenders. They will give you this hard money loan. You will come back over here and I will refinance that loan. And from here on out, I will be your banker that does your loans in Austin, Texas. Now, did he have to tell me any of that? Could he have lost his job if I snitched on him, told me, told me, send me to somebody else? All these things could have happened, right? Now, people, when you present yourself as knowledgeable and knowing what you're talking about, can help you. I met the vice president while working at Lowe's as a manager of the uh, farm credit in the state of Texas. Guess what he was? He was black and he was from South Carolina. He was the vice president over the whole, this is a billion dollar industry in Texas, farm income. He said, my only goal is to get a bunch of Latino and black kids to also participate in the billion dollars industry that is, is Texas farming, land, hunting, you name it, money. But you have to do what? Be in what? Proximity. How many little kids does he talk to? How many teenagers? How many schools does he go to? You know, these things all matter because what happens is people, parents say, well, I never saw that or I never heard it. I was never exposed to it. And the truth of the matter is you're gonna have to get exposed. Uh, there's an article this guy, Financial Samurai wrote called, you can make a hundred, uh, six figures at any age. Immediately, people without even reading this very long, beautiful article, again, his name is, the, the blog is Financial Samurai, you can make six figures at any age, is uh, the article. And people are slamming it before they even read it. Now, when you read it, you go, oh, these are common sense things. Same thing when I'm in Austin, Texas, people say, man, it's just so hard out here, there's no jobs. I go look up all the jobs that pay, pay a hundred thousand a year and I post <clears throat> excuse me I posted it on Facebook and people were mad with me they said well Erica a lot of those jobs are for management I said well yeah you get paid more when you manage people okay I'm just making a mess now hold on you get paid more when you manage people but also there was a ton of jobs on there had no no requirements didn't need experience didn't need this that literally you can just apply and go for it i told you how when i was with um when i was in austin at the church i'm at several people offered me these 70 80 thousand year jobs and i was like oh my god like what do i have to do and they're like oh girl we we got you you can just come in and i'll do the interview but it's all about proximity are you putting yourself in the room are you dressing like a person that needs to be there are you going to events are you going to associations are you bettering yourself People want to help people. There is a level of, and people don't understand this a lot of times because people are in scarcity mindset or like survival mode. When you start making a certain amount of money, something kicks in with you that you want to give to people. You want to give back. You want to help other people because you found the light and you want them to find it too. And I think when people say, well, no one's ever helped me in my life or no one's ever did this in my life, you got to understand where were you at? Where were you hanging around? What were the people you were associating with? Could any of these people help you? So in the planner that's gonna come out probably next week or the week after, um, the team, the 10X people are looking over it right now. In the front of the book, I put, write 150 people you know. And many people are gonna be like, well, what's the point of that? The point of that is every single event I've ever been to, when it talks about private money, private investing, any type of networking or explosive networking event they always oh, wait a minute hold on 
You're done. You're done. You're gone. You're hidden from the channel. I'm done with you. Um, <laughs> so like, so, um, so literally the, that list, whenever you write it, they was, it was an old technique they used to teach in sales, right? You'd write 150 people you knew. And of course they would try to get you to, uh, go sell, you know, whatever. If you were selling carpets, Kirby's, or you were trying to sell insurance, or you work with Aflac, they were trying to get you the 150 people you knew because that was a warm market. Anything outside that 150 people you knew was gonna be a cold market and you were gonna have to work on calling them and convincing them and being in front of their face multiple times, right? And with that, that's kind of where I want people to start when they start that planner. Like, who are the 150 people you know? Are these people helping you get to where you're trying to go? If not, by the end of the 90 days in that planner, you should have a new 150 people. Not all 150, it ain't gonna be like that. But if you meet one new person a week, I'm just saying one for, for, for practice. One times 12 weeks, that's what? 12 new people, right? You do that four times, you know, you do that, you know, every three months you meet that many people. I mean, you just meet one new person a week for 52 weeks, again, what is that? 50 Jamar I do need you to be a moderator but I am driving <laughs> if I can when I get look this is a military town y'all this is ridiculous I want y'all to see this I mean like the other side of the road is absolutely packed that's so crazy to me I can make you a moderator here shortly um when I go let me see if it'll let me do it <gasps> I can add you as moderators yes I just did Jamar you are now a moderator I'm looking for, somebody else wants to be a moderator let me know I figured out how to add it on here. So, um, the key of it's all about proximity. And uh, who was it? Uh, Kevin Samuels. He posted a picture and they put MIT under it. It was all these black men in suits. They looked great. They were looking. They were doing the best they could. And I, I appreciated all of it. AM1, you're now a moderator. Um, and when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I like that because. It, once one person makes a decision, people will flow with it. Right now, Charm City Buyers needs to put the gala on the map for next year. We're going to do a gala. Next year, my boat party is August 1st to August 2nd, 2020. When you start setting the tone and putting people say, listen, this is the event. This is what's going to happen. People will follow. People will go with you. People will follow it. Now, the part people are missing is when Byron Allen was talking for five years he called people over and over who said no I know some people you call a you call a woman or a man twice you act like you about to die I called them twice so so that's nothing in the scheme of the grand bucket of like investing or anytime you work in any kind of sales I remember I worked in apartment management and we had a guy who was like mad wealthy left a big check which you weren't supposed to do back in the time. And so we had to call him. I think I called him seven times to get him to be like, hey, you, you your check you left was too big. Uh, you know, we're going to have to give you a refund. The apartment complex is going to have to give you a refund. And he was just like, okay. But it was take seven times to call him. And I remember telling the, the hire manager that I had, you know, it took me that many times to call him. And she was just like, okay. Like she didn't even have no concern for it because what she realized is sometimes to get on the phone, to get in person, to get in contact with people who are movers and shakers and doing things in life, it may take you repeated times. Repeated. Like, repeatedly calling them. But that part people miss over where Brian said took five years of calling and he was giving them a free show. And this is part of why when I talked with the 10X people, they were like, have you considered doing, have you considered doing commercials, internet, uh, not just internet, but commercials and radio. And I said, oh my God, I've been thinking about that for a long time. It's so amazing that y'all mentioned that to me because there's money there. Now, you know, we, we're making fun, but Kevin Trudeau, dude made $53 million on infomercials. To this day, like the Financial Cures book probably pissed off a lot of banks because he was telling people, hey, in this current crisis, chill out. As long as you're paying $100 on something, they can't mark you as not paying or as a non-payer. They can't mark you that. And there are several times when you see stuff, when you see stuff that you know if a person tried a little bit harder, they would be better. 
if they would open their mind to trying, they'd be better. So that's why when I see Glendon in these different videos, I know what he's saying is true. I know what these. I know that he's bumping into people who are like, "Why should I try to impress people?" No, to impress yourself. The hard work is for you. You, you know what I mean? The the hard work comes for you. This weekend, I, I like dropped a significant amount of money. And we went to a five star hotel, and my 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 nephew was like. This is really nice. And they, they brought the food to the room for breakfast. And he took the basket back downstairs. And I said, honey, you don't have to do that. They come get it for you. And it was one of those moments he's like, well, I didn't know. I even went and got the cart. I said, you don't have to do that either. They'll actually bring a guy up and he'll bring our bags down. And it was this enjoyable moment of trying to explain to him, you know, do you understand what I do? Do you understand what the business runs? Do you understand, you know, how we're affording this really great vacation today just out of a whim? No, I do, but you know how preteens are, right? So he's like, I understand the trucks. I'm like, yeah, you understand the trucks, but do you understand this is essentially a media company? Essentially, this these 1,800 videos at any given time, as I transition to more of a business owner, I literally can just go run ads on any of these videos. I can run Google AdWords on any of these videos, and they'll make money at any given time. There's still videos from three, four, five years ago that still make money to this day. And you know how I know? When you buy something, I can click on the button and it'll take me back to the original video that you clicked on the link from. And it'll be videos from four or five years ago. Well, my hair was really short. So, you know, the power in having business and hard work is if you work hard in a way that makes sense, it can pay off for years and years to come. Now, I saw um, Glendon had posted The Girl with the Snake. And here's what I was trying to get people to see. There's an article, and it's a study. If I can go find it, I'll go find it again. But I did a video on it. And it was saying, when there is a recession coming, beautiful people are the first to lose their jobs. Now, I'm not making this shit up. It's totally true. It was talking about in sales and different things. It was like, the attractive person that's not effective. Now, let's just put the key word there, not effective, right? They're attractive, but they're really not, like, they're not making a killer sales at the office or whatever. That person is you know the quickest to be let go right and when he, when he said oh my god people are are there's like three million views on this girl's video with the pet snake and i said yeah you know what it is they see this beautiful feminine uh pretty girl with curly hair and a very feminine van it's got pink all over it and they go what they're thinking is this beautiful girl why is she living in a van why is somebody not taking care of this beautiful girl? Because it destroys the stereotypes that beautiful people have easy lives. Completely destroys them. Hold on a second. Hi, yes. Can I get a mocha java milkshake, please? The 16 ounces. Does the 16 ounce have two shots of espresso? Yes, ma'am. All right, that'll do. All right. So welcome to the cruise level, dear. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, I'm getting basically a chocolate milkshake with espresso in it, basically. Yeah, I know. The calories. The killer calories. Too many calories. Okay. Anyway, beautiful people with Ray Gun. Yeah, so Ray Gun, it was saying in um, the, the study that, you know, does beauty help you get into a job? Is essentially what the study was. And it was saying yes. Um, but it doesn't help them stay in the job. They were some of the first people laid off. Now, if you look, and it was saying the correlation was between, um, the correlation was between, if you look at them, the the increase of waiters and waitresses. Like last night when we went, we're in Asheville, like they had a live talent singing. Um, all of a sudden, you saw like two of the different, two of the different uh, wait staff that were beautiful girls get up and sing a whole song and you're like oh my god I bet they're a musician but they're waiting tables to do what right make make ends meet and when I saw that immediately I was just like it brought me back to that study and I was telling mom I was like even beautiful people need jobs right <laughs> they need money right um but that's why that van life girl and here's the thing with the van life girl let me make it very clear there are several if I could tell all the thing and I'm gonna put it into the YouTube course eventually when I finish it on my break gonna try to finish it before Christmas but I doubt it the course the the conferences and things I've been going to you just need that one viral video I know it sounds crazy but again the Ty Lopez technique you need that one viral video and what that van life girl did 2.9 million views 
it took um victoria's secret and a lot of these other not victoria's secret what is it, what is it um claire's makeup whatever that makeup company it took them five years to get 2.9 million views it took this girl four months now what's going to happen with this girl what's going to have what's going to happen with this girl is she's going to still do videos with the van but she's going to have enough money to do what not live in the van anymore and if you pay attention on instagram owned by renee renee danielle like she was making a killer money but was like oh my stuff is in storage oh it's in storage you know my stuff is in storage and then she moved into this giant apartment like yes ma'am right. thank you um so she had this giant apartment that in la you guys know how much la costs and she's downtown she literally has a huge bottom part of her apartment and a loft up top you guys know that's not cheap in la i mean you just already know it's not and then the other girl who's been has all these sponsored posts she comes over in a brand new jeep and the jeep i've told y'all about is a fifty thousand dollar jeep thank you Yes, Ray Gunn, some of the prettiest women are medical assistants. Right now, I have three friends who are medical sales. Thank you. There you go. And you thank you, you too. And they met their spouse via what? Medical sales. And that's the funniest thing. It's like, whenever you hear some doctor left his wife, they go, well, who's this woman? Medical sales. It's the horror stories that come out of medical sales will crack you up. But literally... You know, it works to your advantage, right? Work it to your advantage. Now, this girl, if she's smart with this van light, she will get every little thing if you saw in her video. You see a lot in her video that's very pretty. It's very decorative. What you're going to start seeing in her videos is product placement. There are several people right now on YouTube that have lots of product placement in their videos. And you don't even notice it. But it's there, and if I was to sit you down and roll you through the video, I go, see right there? See that? See that hair part? See the eyes? See this? See this? And and then they also give them a link. Now, if you see my affiliates, get a link. And I just finished paying out my affiliates for when I went to uh, Asheville. The link for those things will be under the video. Now, owned by Renee, I saw maybe like 17 things in her house I thought were amazing. She had a link below. I clicked up a link. It had all this list of things. Now, take a guess how many things off the 17 I saw I bought. Out of the 17 things I saw in this girl's apartment that I thought were amazing, how many of those things do you think I brought? Take a guess, put a number in there, and I know it's a 30-second delay, so I'll let you do it. And no, no, I don't think she's faking it, but she's smart enough to know by filming this van life, she's pretty, she's feminine she knows that you know someone else in the world have told this girl she's pretty you know she may have came to la trying to make money trying to be a model and the door did not open for her because there are you could literally throw a rock and hit 27 beautiful women in la right or in parts of california um even the girl that does, was used to do my dermatology she uh did my face she was from california and she was beautiful she was super bone skinny and she was saying how um, she had a big scar on her side, and so she couldn't do, she couldn't do pictures. You couldn't do pictures or all modeling or stuff outside the little catalogs or whatever. But she's beautiful. I was like, girl, they can airbrush that, right? So, if she lives in Texas, because in Texas she can be a ten all day, it don't matter. In California, she might be a seven, you know. So it's one of those things. <laughs> but the key here is when she does this van life video, when you what you're going to see in the future is new stuff in her in her van. And, and mark my words on this. What you're going to see is new little pieces in her van. If she's smart, and this video went viral like that, there's already been people reaching out to her via email. Every day of the week I get sponsor stuff reached out to me. Um, people ask me to wear t-shirts on camera for my videos. I mean, trust me, it happens. People keep calling me while my show's live. Drives me crazy. Oh, yeah she listen even the girl that does her show um, the black girl Tori love whatever and she has those books she's always selling trust me listen people I know people making ten thousand dollars a month off of ebooks Victor Pride is not making that up literally he does make 
he does make ten thousand dollars off ebooks he's actually shown those statements there are people i think um dr eric patrick who was a chiropractor who just retired the invest shirt you guys see me wear he is doing a, a show with ash cash where they make literally four or five figures off books oh how many things did i buy i bought uh 12 things in the end it started with four but then i bought 12. like like my mom came over and was like oh this is so nice in your house when'd you get this i was like well It's a, little, it's a little thick oh lord that's it thick Woo! i don't i don't i mean there's not i can't make a course for everything right you know i don't even try to but i was going to make that blogging course and show you how people coordinate their blog to books um because i see it every day i see it every day like i'll literally go look up somebody's blog and then i'll type in their name on amazon and sure enough there's like two three four books and I'm like, I bet I can read their blog and it'd be the same thing in the books. I, it happens all the time. But, it just, you'll hit people at different mediums. But for sure, the Van Life Girl, now I'm not saying all of them are faking. Now, when we were in Asheville, we saw like five people for real looking like Van Life. They looked a little dirty. They didn't look homeless, they just looked like hungry. I don't know what the word is. They looked a little thin. They were like walking around and they walked out of their van. And I was like, oh, they live in that van. Look at that bed in there, mom. And my mom's like, ugh. And think about it if you have this multi-millionaire thing called video byron allen's not stupid if you listen to that interview one more time like i i plot i beg with you listen to it again he knows he was going to be a billionaire the sad part about bob johnson and bet is he could have been more wealthy if he had kept bet but sometimes people are so tired of doing something that it's this payout they want payout that van life sister be looking clean. She look real clean. Listen, I'm Dre. She knows exactly what she's doing. You're going to start seeing her videos. You're going to see product placement. And write this down. Mark my words. You can put it for me today. You're going to see product placement. You're going to see if she does Instagram, all of a sudden there's going to be stuff that she says, this helps me live van life better. Like this bottled water, this, 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 all these things. There's just going to be so much product placement. I probably could write a list of 20 things that you're going to start seeing her hold up in videos or it will be behind her in the background. People keep calling me while I'm trying to do my show. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, B and now listen, BT, you have a BT 1, 2, and 3, and 4. You have a BT Her, a BT Jazz, a BT um, some other stuff. The BT Her is like a women rah rah channel. The BT Jazz was mostly music. The BT other one was like a healthy life. Like, like literally, there was one of the BTs that was like this is what a black channel should be it was like healthy food cooking network it was like they showed people doing just regular stuff um but i understand him selling because of the stress of running something that big and the money um i wouldn't be shocked if he was forced to sell i mean with this wife getting a divorce and everything and what it did is it made her a billionaire too at the same time as getting that divorce but to me her like i've watched the stuff on his wife it's ridiculous like she wanted to make this um spa for black people this like you know spa for black people wealthy black people need a spa and i'm like listen i get what you're doing but um to me that's a waste of time <laughs> i'm like like go pick up some more i mean the media is powerful i literally saw multiple posts where people were like i love the harriet tubbit movie you see all white people weren't bad like in the harriet tubbit movie we've already talked about how it's false like they've added fake stories all the people in the movie are fake like and this is how much you tell people aren't reading people aren't reading and byron allen was right you know byron allen was right like you're being miseducated you're not getting money for funding and i remember telling white people that the the top minority that benefits from affirmative action is white women and they're like no nah, no way no way here's a billionaire telling you white women and gay men are considered minorities and i tell people i'm like y'all they're milking this system for what it's worth and so if you're being poorly educated you're not reading books because the average american reads less than one book a day once one book a year um and they may be skimming the people reading that may be skimming and then on top of that you're you're not watching like documentaries and educational stuff literally what happens you, you can read it you can run anything by people 
You can run anything by people. You're not being educated. You're not getting funding for your businesses. You're getting funding for student loans for degrees that don't make sense. Just being honest. A lot of these degrees don't make sense. Now, I love community college because nine times out of ten, you get an associate degree in under two years and you get to go use it. It has to be effective. You got to go use it right then and there. If it don't work, it's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. How about Tyler Perry? I'm not talking about Tyler Perry this week. I'm not talking about Tyler Perry in this video. This video is on Brian Allen. <laughs> like, like, it, like, I respect him. He's res I respect all that. There's going to be a whole other video about that. But this video is about Byron Allen. If you look at what Byron Allen did, even when you Google him, it's marked comedian and businessman. That's what it's marked. Comedian, businessman. And what's going to happen when he eventually in the future 40 years from now dies or whatever like you're gonna see where he really i mean he really worked that thing he worked it and it's so smart and like again when i talk about kevin trudeau and the ebooks and the books and, and infomercials there is a market there people are up late at night thinking why do why does my life suck why are things not working out in my favor and so what they do is they watch late night tv <clears throat> And you'll see that stuff over and over, the same videos, over and over and over and over and over and over and over. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got this little cough. Um, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put an hour to two hours into it. You, you gotta put hard work into it, and you gotta have a business formula that you can pull yourself out of it, and somebody else can work it, delegate. You, you know, there's a lot of things there that people are like, oh, Eric, I want to do this, or they'll tell me about some MLM, and I'll be like, no, don't tell me about no MLM, right? Like, because the amount of work you'll put in that MLM, you could have put in your own business, building it from the ground up, straight up. And and the truth is, I was talking with my mom as we are driving, and I was like, America is for sale. And she's like, oh, I hate that. You're selling your inheritance. Now, Andrew Jackson, or was it Thomas Jefferson? Ugh. It might have been Andrew Jackson or Thomas Jefferson. One of them was saying that, What's going to happen is people are going to wake up and they not recognize the land that they live on. That their forefathers fought to have, they're not going to recognize it. Why are they not going to recognize it? Because they will sell everything. And that's kind of where America is right now. Where we're selling everything. We're selling it to China because they're paying money. They're selling it to these people because they're paying money. And that's why when I tell you, don't let people come over here, buy the corner store, buy the gas station, and run you out. We all know people, and I hate to say it this way, but you... We got bright family members who could afford to own the location and put other family members who aren't as bright in that location to work every day, nine to five. I literally see that with lots of families. There's like five cousins that could go work the, the corner store. There's five cousins who could cut the hair at the barbershop. There's cousins who could do uh, busy work and while you go do what? Build the business. And not even cousins. Let's say you don't have any cousins. You literally could pay people 5 to $12 an hour to build your business while you go out and do better work. But you got to be able to pay. You got to be able to pay those people. So what does that mean? That is you need funding. So some of the clients I'm working with on the phone now, that's all I'm doing is setting them up so they can get funding. I'm like, here, here's the guy I'm working with. Here's the guy I'm partnering with. You're looking for funding. What are you trying to do? Because nine times out of ten, you that funding and that speed is what keeps things growing big. Now, I'm not doing it for anybody to get over leverage. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, putting money behind good ideals and good good product and good services. That's what grows it for a lot of people. Let me see. Sorry, trying to get in this parking lot. I can go in this door. I forgot I don't have my mom's handicap sticker. This is the other vehicle. <laughs> Let me park in the regular park. Hold on. <laughs> I was showing up about to get ready to park in that handicap spot. Let me stop myself. But anyway, my point in all this, because you're probably like, Erica, what's the point? The point is, if you're being miseducated, educate yourself. You see, I spent about sixty-seven at this point, $67,000 this year in business as education. And people are like, why? You don't need that. I do. Because as you try to reach new levels and you try to get million-dollar loans, you're missing keys or pieces to the puzzle that you need. Point blank parents. So let me see what you guys are talking about. Thank you for the 71 likes. Ooh, y'all was in here commenting. Let me see. 
Los Angeles, Raleigh, Charlotte, Memphis. Fort Bragg, but Nashville, Tennessee, Lizard. I hear you. I'm telling you, it's you gotta watch it. Pay for me to go. Charm Seed Buyers, I'll pay for the whole fam to go. The banker never heard of it. You're gonna have the guy in it. Samuel Jackson's in it. I'm trying to think of the other black guy. Uh, I think he's the black guy from the Avengers. Uh, the black guy that Captain America gave his shield to at the end of the movie end of the movie. It's not equal. That is the point of his yeah, that is the point of a That's right. You you must take it. Yep. Yeah, I hit the eject button all the time. I approached that one. Mod me up. <laughs> Uh, traffic where you looks like traffic in Florida 8 a.m. to 3 to 7 p.m. Yeah. It only what takes one person to change your life and mindset. That's true. Yes. It is is the lawsuit is with Comcast and Charter. Um, and they lost it because here's the here's the here's the deal. Okay, that's really good. If I have 70 billion dollars, and let's do the hypothetical, you have like 13% black people, 15% Hispanic people, and like, you know, 5% Asian, Indian, whatever. If I got $70 billion, then technically out of that $7 billion, let's just let's just round it off. I should be giving about $10 billion to the black people, about $10 billion to the Hispanic people, and like $2 billion to the Asian, Indian, uh, ran TV stations right that that's the nice way to do it but what people forget is bill clinton started this now i'm not going republican or democrat if you look back in the 1990s you had all these um black and urban music radio stations you had uh more theaters more more tv shows more tv stations and they made a bill and it was like bill clinton sold y'all bill of goods he said it was gonna be make everybody more equal and what it did is it put two or three rules in there that all like I think 700 stations got wiped out because they couldn't meet the three only big companies could meet the three so Bill Clinton that that bill started this and kind of wiped out a bunch of black radio it used to be every city you'd go to had major radio major radio productions individualized now you don't got that so let's start with Bill Clinton so now we're down the road I think Bill Clinton's been out what 20 something years y'all somebody correct me on how long Bill Clinton's been out that has started this monster called Charter and Comcast. On top of in the radio side, um, I forgot the name of the media company, but it's like one of the biggest, Cumulus Radio or Cumulus Media. And now they're monsters. They're like, I don't want their businesses broke up, but that's what happens when you have, and this is crony capitalism. You're going to have somebody from Donald Trump's DOJ, Department of Justice, come out and speak. That's crony capitalism. That's like me going against fight somebody and go, you know, when Barack Obama's in, like, hey, I'm going to call Barack Obama. I'm calling somebody up there. I'm going to call a favor and they come in and speak on my behalf. It has no place in that courtroom. And what's happening is you have the small guy getting smashed and crushed, right? You should have 20 Oprahs, right? You even see the Jacksonville, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, owner, who's Indian, going in a partnership with two black guys to make a black company. My theory which I will tell y'all more of this in another video. My theory is he knows this is going to go Byron Allen's way. Why does she keep calling? Okay, sorry about that. I got disconnected. I am back. My family kept calling me because they're ordering food. All right, so... Um, oh, dang it. Cut all those other ones off. But anyway, so the point of that is... When it did that, it's it, it's squashing people. So there should technically be like 20 Oprahs. There should be 20 black channels. There should be 20 Tyler Perry. You know, there should be a bigger number. But when you squeeze people out financially, that is the big fight. Okay. So I think the Jacksonville Jaguar, and I'll go a whole route in this video later. I think the Jacksonville Jaguar uh, owner did that because he sees it going by now his way. And it's just money in the bank. I mean, if you think about it, like, African-Americans on average watch five to six hours of TV, the most of any community. 
And so what are you going to do? You're going to sell stuff to them the most. You're going to have the most commercial space. You're going to have... Like, I don't know if you've ever seen BET, but I think the movie Big Boy uh, is like an hour and 30 minute movie. But literally that thing is on for like two and a half hours because every two minutes is commercials. Every time you turn around, it's a commercial. You're like, good Lord. But they know the market. They know the people they're marketing to. So, I mean, I literally thought about it. I thought about hitting late night commercials on like BET and just market classy clown blog just to get crazy traffic to the channel and see what YouTube would do. But there's, there's stuff about that. Bear Grylls about to pay her a visit. BET have entered the Latino market, especially the black Hispanic market, by the way you look like my Puerto Rican cousin. Thanks again. <laughs> Just came back from a four-day real estate conference just to network with other investors and lenders. Yeah. BT is way better now when Bob Johnson had it at all the shows and music videos and infomercials. Yeah. I got my degree with no debt and I'm going to a lucrative field. Why are people p getting paper for jobs paying less than 40 k Yes. Yes. I'm Ron for real estate. I watched the interview today and this guy's really on top of his game. He really is. Thank you, Just Do It. Jess, if you're going to make books for children, go ahead and make a whole book series for children. Because parents are always looking for books for children. I've actually went online and the Instagram interview, uh, Instagram um, video, like marketing ads for kids books are crazy. And it's also because I was looking for kid books for my friends who just had babies. And now I get ads all the time. But it's a good market. Mini Richardson, the best thing I did is get my associates in nursing at community college to go go back and get a bachelor's exactly if it wasn't money it would have been canceled years ago that's right true a lot of hispanics in nyc open up uh hair salons and bodegas yep thank you it's so easy to put them out of business in the hood and take over gas station store. mr fantastic here's the thing is people have to buy stuff <laughs> that's just it like if you go like on these channels i'm always trying to do these videos about biz uh biz quest and buy biz sale because they're two websites that all they do is sell people's businesses they're just the middleman that's all but if you look around you see all this for sale by owner stuff that's just people ready to sell out and bail out a lot of those people are ready for owner financing No, no, Kelly Cole, I, here's the thing. What you're going to see in a few years with the statistics, there's a high number of Africans in Maryland. And let me be clear. I don't want to say Africans like the whole continent. Um, Ethiopians and Somalians own a significant portion of gas stations and corner stores in Wisconsin and also in Maryland and also, what's the state underneath there? Somewhere in Delaware, somewhere close to there. High numbers. And, and here in, in Dallas... Uh, the African group, I think, are Congo, the Congonese. What do you call it when they're from the Congo? What's this abbreviation? Y'all put it in there, in there for me. They own a bunch of gas stations in Dallas, and they're kind of bumping up ahead against the Koreans who in Dallas own gas stations. So those two people own the most in the hood. So there is a market of black people buying. They're just not American black. <laughs> like, best way to say that. Anthony Bolton, my oldest brother was trying to convince me to sell our parents' home for the longest. I told him I would never sell this house. Anthony Bolton, then you need to buy him out of his share. Point by period. If you're going to refinance the house or something to that extent, you need to buy him out. If y'all are going to make it a rental, then you need to split it in half so that he gets his fair share of income. But again, at some point, you're going to either bump up to a lawyer or something. Because that comes when parents don't want to pick a sibling to donate the house to. They just give it to the whole family, which is a messy way of not picking a child and going on about their business and my grandma did that she picked particular children to inherit certain rental properties and to this day my aunts other aunts are mad because they're like she doesn't do anything with it or she doesn't take care of the rentals and i go yeah but grandma knew she was a broker sister <laughs> i'm so sorry if my aunts ever see this they'll slap me but they knew that particular aunt was always short on cash she was a school teacher and then the other aunt was a um she worked in a library and those two those two those two jobs just didn't make a lot of money so grandma gave those two women in our family more rentals than the other sisters so but it was to take care of them apple mac my dad owned a corner store but had to sell because he was horrible at hiring hired fans and family which was a no-no apple mac here's the thing i would tell people if you if your family family have those kind of problems then for sure what you need to do is you need to hire cheap workers to be in there 
but that's the part that's that comes into that funding conversation where if your dad had a 20 or 30k credit card that he uses for three months in a row paying you know payroll and then as money comes back in he covers costs and things it just comes back in a circle it's very circular it breaks my heart every time somebody tells me they're getting a criminal justice degree i'm not gonna say anything on that um because i got a business degree and a sociology degree so people at the time are like oh eric what are you gonna do i'm like okay first of all the minors in, in entrepreneurship that ecu like made up a made up a degree just straight up made it up because it had so many you know young frat guys in there with me like getting this entrepreneurial degree and i was like oh this is perfect just taught me all the stuff to do to get small store started gas stations going out of business too how do you figure drop drop 16 tv because you have a series of people who will always walk to the corner store always don't sell that home fix it up anthony bolton is it is it is something wrong with the home anthony bolton give us some more data Oh, I see what you're saying, Kelly. Oh, you're working on it now? Congratulations, Anthony Bowman. Fix it up. When does the banker come out? It's, uh, what I saw in the theater was December 6th. And so my whole goal is until December 6th, I'm going to talk about the banker. I'm going to I'm gonna talk about it on Instagram. I'm going to talk about it on... I'm going to call up whatever little east side austin you know schools i can after school program i'm gonna reach out to the urban league in austin to see if the urban league will pay let me buy some people some tickets like i'll even put on an event in austin if i can to be honest like i'll just buy up 20 tickets and like make it an event like i'm trying to i'm really that serious about it right like i don't know how to how else to make it work other than to buy up like 20 tickets i don't know Nina Long is in the movie web. That's right, Malik Yoba. Is he in there? He might be. How do you vet a course to see if it's worth paying? By the way, I'm planning to pay the credit repair course. So, many uh, Rodriguez, the key here, the key here is, have you attempted to read at least five, like, let's be honest. If I was to start somebody off and I say, listen, go grab, if you tell me right now you want to be in real estate, I'm going to tell you, Ron for real estate or anybody here who's in real estate, name off five real estate books that all people should read if they want to do real estate. If they were saying they're gonna do credit, I'm gonna I'm gonna name five different people in credit. They should go buy their book. I'm gonna tell you to go buy five to six people's books in that genre, so that you've read it, audiobook or read multiple times what you think, and then go, okay, I've read this. Do I need a course telling me step by step? Some people are visual learners and do need that. They do need a step by step process to show them how to do things and that's where courses come in uh you mean all this stuff these are courses that you can sit down and learn and, and read read and visual paper and again if you want to hire staff to do what you're doing could you teach your staff what you're doing some people are horrible teachers so a course that you have access to that you can sit a person that's going to work with you in front of so that they can watch it too is possibly a great opportunity that part so that's that's what i would say so anybody they have another court date November 13th. They do, and I'm watching for November 13th. It doesn't look good for Apple Mac. I don't believe that. And the reason I'm going to say I don't believe that is because you have two, even Guinness, Ginsburg, you know, I'm not worried about her because she's like elderly. But I would say Roberts usually votes different than what conservative wants. If you act, and I'm, I'm following a lot of things on CPAC, they get mad because they're like, Roberts isn't voting like we want. I'm like, just because he's a conservative doesn't mean he has to vote that way. So I think you're going to get a surprise in Roberts and you're going to get a surprise in at least two other people on the Supreme Court because they don't want that blowback. Yeah, he won twice in circuit court already. So yeah, Bill Clinton's a fraud. How is the podcast industry? I mean, it's again... Think about it. YouTube is a billion dollar industry. When people sit here and go, I, when I'm like, I'm going to quit, I'm going to take a break. I'm not quitting, quitting. I mean, this has been a moneymaker for me, okay? Uh, if all else fails, you may not see me do new videos, but the old videos will get all kind of ads running on them because this is a billion dollar industry. It's the same for podcasting. And the, the techniques are very simple. Again, it's literally, whether you do interviews or you speak on people, you're going to have three ways you make money. You're going to have affiliates, your own products and services, or product placement point blank period now I could break it down in different ways how that happens but again those are that's literally a course 
literally a course to break down how to do YouTube product, product, products and services and affiliates. There's the same thing for podcasts. Uh, what's his name? Uh, on Fire Dude for podcasts. What's his name? Eric Dumas. Podcast on Fire. He's good. Bill Clinton was a corporate pawn. I mean, listen, if you listen to black people, they'll tell you Bill Clinton was the was God. It was the feel good 90s. When Bill Clinton was here, everything was wonderful. And you're like, y'all, it really wasn't that great. Jobs were plentiful. Everything was milk and honey. You'd be like, okay, there were factory jobs everywhere. In the 90s when you were in your 20s. You're now 50, 60, 70 years old, Uncle Jerome. You, what, what you need with a factory full? You get hurt. Don't do that. I Heart Media, there you go. Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I cannot. I don't like her. Native American, you know, there's so much grief with the Native American community getting respect. And there's actually been a, a genetic increase, like 9% increase in the, in the Native American community and 8% increase in black community. But there's been a 25% increase in the Asian community and 28% increase in the Hispanic community. So when people, more people are claiming Native blood or are actually just being um, for their area they're in, you know, just claiming their appropriate lineage it's shameful that elizabeth warren basically took a spot from somebody in college and as a job as a professor that was wrong i know my mom called me like four times i was like you just ordering food don't you don't need my input what bill clinton did was eliminate the step aside and open up the licenses to highest bidder so they bid out all thank you thank you apple mac i appreciate this I'm going to reread it. What Clinton did is eliminate the step aside and open up the licenses to the highest bidder so they outbid all the black stations and fired everyone and changed the content to dumb garbage music. This is correct. But you also did lose about 730 stations, Apple Mac. If you look at it, um, several of them closed because they were small. Same thing's happening in broadcast TV, right? Because when you start talking about TV going to 4K and TV going to like um, analog or digital, remember they had the big fight about that? You had a lot of these small little stations do what? Record, record shows on these old ass cameras and they couldn't keep up with the change in technology. He's been out 17 years. Thank you so much. Clear Channel, I Heart, I Heart Media. Oh, I didn't buy products from the Van Girl Life. I bought products from Fem, owned by Femme. Uh, it's Danielle Renee, Renee Danielle, off of Instagram. It's the girl I kept showing with the curly blonde hair. We have the same type of hair. It's just I'm darker skin. Um, and she showed all these things in her house. And I bought literally almost 17 things, but I really bought like four at first. And then I went back and I was like, I want those other things. And and that's what you're going to see from Van Lifer. You're going to start seeing product placement. You're going to probably see a link under her videos. People are going to click it. These are the things that make my van life easier. And it's going to be water filters. It's going to be REI clothes. It's going to be very, it's going to sneak up on you and you won't even notice. Clear Channel owns all the billboards in America. So Apple Mac, when I go and look for billboards to promote on, like there's websites where you can sell billboard space. I mean, there's so much stuff. Right? And so when people tell me they're going to boycott something, Terrell Jennings, exactly, Monopolies. When people tell me they're going to boycott something, I just laugh because I'm like, do you know how many, like this company owns this company and that company owns this company? And there's no reason why we can't get a piece of this pie. You're just going to have to come off some bread with it, right? So you're not going to just do Facebook ads. For me, the thing is you want to shock the algorithm. So, and this is just a theory this guy was talking about. If you got people coming from the radio, you got people coming from TV, all these different locations in the United States clicking on your YouTube channel or your website. You're going to shake the algorithm, throw the algorithm off because it doesn't really, where's all this traffic coming from? Why is these various locations? And they're going to open up the floodgates and push you up higher in the algorithm. And that's one of the trainings I, returned, I went to. And I was like, makes sense because there was literally a company where they were doing ACs and they wrapped two of the trucks completely and then they also bought radio ads and it just blew up. Their online website and everything just blew up. Really with extreme government deficiency, why too much credit lending? Uh, Byron Allen's indoors, we have no clue about. Listen, so here's the thing about Byron Allen. He is, okay, where you see where people try to get their show on, a, on TV, or their local network, like Current Keys. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Technically, I say that, even though military kids have been from all over. You look up 
Kerwin Keys, K U R I N K E Y S. He is from here. He used to, back in the day, drive a pink SUV. Now, he's been married like four times. He has like eight kids from eight women or whatever. Um, but he's like the town mega businessman. Let's just say it, a black businessman. He used to drive a pink SUV, drive it all around town. It was marketing. It was like, how to, how to know if your man's cheating? Now, in a military town, that van, he people would stop him all the time. Got the book. I'll buy the book. I'll buy the book, right? And it was hilarious. And then eventually, he bought a billboard in Atlanta for Tyler Perry to speak with him. Now, yes, did Tyler Perry call? Sure did. Sure did. Not much came of it. He couldn't bro the show. Now, Kerwin Key's show is on local TV. And he told all his friends about it. And I said, Kerwin, you know what you need to do is you need to get on the radio and do about 30 ad spots for this show and say, my show's on TV. Make sure you catch it tonight. Make sure you catch it tonight. If you got this TV channel, make sure you catch it tonight. And that will also increase the traffic for people seeing that channel. TV is powerful. It just is. And I know that put an extra some extra buckaroos in his pocket per se and that's why i'm trying to get you guys to understand it like they're like byron allen's opening doors that people don't know about like nah people know these doors are powerful they just cost money to go through they just cost money to go through i remember a prime example my mom's in the military and there's like a certain level where people are sergeant majors first sergeants and they start getting promoted to e7 e8 but people don't like it per se because then they get stuck doing what fetching coffee for generals in dc and that's this is literally what 12 different parents have described it as they're like yeah i'm about to get promoted oh i'm gonna have to go live in dc or bethesda maryland where i'm fetching coffee for people and i was like there's levels to this and when you get to certain levels you gotta know how to get around that or not be a part of that but that's a enlisted kind of argument um, where people complain that they're fetching coffee not an officer's argument obviously Congolese. Thank you, Gregory Glass. Congolese. So the Congolese in Dallas are the guys you see on the video who own 300 trucks. The video where the four guys went from like zero trucks to 300 trucks in three years or something like that. The Congolese. The Congolese are also the people that are doing a lot of owning of gas stations in Houston and in Dallas. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because we literally could sit right here on a piece of paper and I could go meet with the acquisition group, go, look, let's buy gas stations, let's go buy hotels, let's go buy all these different things. Let's go pull our money together and buy these offices. And these, these. There's so much for sale in America. You just have to determine which way you want to go to be truthful. That's all. My nephew has 10% ownership in one of the trucks, right? And I'm trying to get him to see, okay, do you understand why this, why this is this way or how this is or how much things cost? Things like that. What's up, everybody? Glad to see folks covering. This is hard as they are. Edward, like, I'm so serious about this. Like, November 13th, I'm going to be doing, like, a live watch show. Like, I don't even know where I'm going to be November 13th. I think I'm going to still be in Las Vegas. No, I'm going to be in uh, Oakland. I'll be in Oakland. But I'll, I'll do a live show all day in freaking Oakland if I got to. Um, but I'm also going to, I'm really serious about the Banker movie. I don't know, if you're a black person in California and you ain't heard about the banker movie or you ain't going i don't understand because this was about california it was about all these black people living out in california could not get a loan right because they always try to tell you the south was horrible but they don't ever talk about california and new york and maryland and ohio was just as horrible just as many laws just as many bull crap blocking you from buying stuff buying a home and it took people going hmm if i own that bank we can give black people loans as many loans as we want boom so when Byron Allen made that conversation about if Barack Obama while in actually audited not for minorities which were white women and gay men but actual just black people he was serious they would have had to go dig up black people from the grave to give them money okay so that's why I was big on funding and credit repair because I was like hey whatever can get your foot in the door to get you funding because there's a lot of people who started businesses. You look at E.D. Cone, all these people on the YouTube, 20, 30 grand credit card, help them start their real estate journey. Help them start their real estate being an agent. Help them keep them in their apartment for the couple six months until their money, their business start making money. It's access to those small amounts that make a big difference. So there's a whole conversation there, but I won't. Yeah, Gregory, I was telling him, hey, Anthony, buy him out. Digital Detroit, Erica, I ain't gonna lie. You got me taking my wife on dates at local conferences. Listen, surprise your spouse. Take them to a conference. 
the worst can happen is they sit there and completely it, it be bored out of their mind. And I've actually seen, I was at the Grant Cardone 10X and he was going hard. And some dude brought his wife and she's sitting there like, <sighs> like so bored. And I was like, honey, this is, this is your marriage is not going to last. If you're not even a little bit like, okay, what does this man want us to be here for? Why does he want this? Okay, I'm here. I'm supporting it. Go get some food. Go get some snacks. Go be distracted. Go get on your phone. But don't act like this is not, not good stuff because it is. Top three conferences in the world you will not, you recommend not to miss in 2020. Top three conferences. Um, my boat party, August 1st to 22nd. No, I mean, it's not going to be big enough for more than 100 people. Um, I go 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 to 10x in Las Vegas if you can. It's gonna be one time you're gonna have literally people smashed into a space, a small space. And if you can bring some of your staff and make them wear t-shirts, this one guy brought 25 people out of his staff, made them all wear t-shirts. I would be willing. I'm debating on it to bring like 20 people to Grant Cardone event if they were willing to wear like Classy Climb YouTube channel something t-shirts or something. Um, there's just various ways I would I would go do that one for sure. I would do VidCon or Vid Summit. Probably I have to do Vid Summit more than I would do VidCon. Um, and that's for our YouTube people and our media people. If you want to be a podcaster, I'd go get the podcaster one that was in 2020 coming up. Uh, also, Black Wealth Renaissance. I think they're doing, in May, they're doing a real estate conference. It's inner city. If you want to invest in cheap properties in the inner cities, that's probably going to be a conference where you want to go to. That one for sure. My family on a 400 acre, we have old contract with Gap Pacific. Congratulations. Financial base, Erica, <laughs> stop it. Trees still sell. What type of finance, cutter repair? Yes, I mean, like there's so many conferences. You literally, there's a thing called Conference Monkey, which is weird. It's a website called Conference Monkey and it'll show you all the conference in the United States. You literally could go to conferences every weekend of the year. Like I live in Austin, Texas, and every weekend there's a conference there. Even during the week, there's conferences all week long. I could go all weekend long. This is delicious, y'all. It's delicious. Cornelius Edwards, I, I cannot mess with you. He's talking about Swisher Sweets. I met a 12 year old at a real estate conference. He had 22 rentals and a published book. These parents are bringing these kids and they're killing it. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out which one I can bring my nephew because he's right at that preteen where they're 13. They're starting, they sit there the whole time like, like they're annoyed, but he actually was enjoying the trip. I was like, he's like, I'm just sitting here. And I realized him and my younger nephew are introverts. And so I have to kind of like, I'm an extrovert. And I have to like slowly let them kind of talk and share with me what they want to do. In my area, movie theaters will allow you to privately rent out a room, screen room, if you purchase 100 tickets. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, any any of the movie theaters in Austin, if they'll show the banker, I will I will go to it. Because it's probably only going to be two that does it. And it'll probably be this smaller Regal theater that will do it. And I will literally say, hey, I'm going to buy 100 tickets um, or 20 tickets. You know, I just want to, I want to support it as much as possible. I think I could, I think I could float a hundred tickets would probably be like, what, $1,200? That's not too bad. I mean, but it's, I ain't doing it for the news, but I might do it for the news. I'd be like, I bought a hundred tickets for this, blah, blah, blah. And I would probably set up going onto the um, radio stations and whatnot in Austin to do it. But yeah, I'm going I'm to go through the Urban League first. I'm going to ask them first. Um, nope. Drop 16. Electric cars will be affordable, would lead to them being sought after after option of gasoline power. So drop 16, that's a that's a liberal hope. At the end of the day, I'll tell you, when I just drove through the mountains of North Carolina, they do not want electric cars. They want their older cars to work well, so they don't have to buy new cars because new cars are too pricey. So you will always have a market for gasoline. You will always have a market for older cars that are functioning. Point by period. It was an Ohio RIA conference, but people came from Texas, Tennessee, I think you mean Alabama. All over the place, yeah. John Dumas, yes. Pocahontas War. 
Yeah, join a real group. There's multiple and multiple states. 18 years old when Bill Clinton was elected. We only in our 40s now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> I'm talking about people that were older. They were like in their 30s working. In their 30s working. I remember I was at Lowe's and this woman was like, man, the 90s were so good and it was jobs everywhere. And she was like 50 something. I'm like, you at Lowe's now? Like, what you doing? I actually do have more native blood than this. <laughs> How do y'all think I got some of these government contracts? <laughs> I will not. I'm just going to be. I listen. I told y'all I qualify for multiple things on paper. I'm from North Carolina, from a region. I worked in an office full of older black people, 60 above, and I criticized Hillary Clinton. They told me I was a sellout, even though I voted Democrat my whole life. Ooh, don't do it, Alex Bolton. Don't do it. Telecom Act of 1966. Miss Living, you are the freaking MVP. Thank you. Telecom Act of 1966, Miss Living. Thank you so much. Everybody, that, if you want to go see why we're here, why your favorite radio stations are gone, like there was even a great woman in Philadelphia. She had like nine radio stations, black woman. She was doing it. And when that Telecom 1996 came, it wiped out people. Clinton and NAFTA, them too. That's bad. I ain't gonna say nothing about Trump. I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm actually glad Trump is in because people will see that it's the, the game has changed. The cheese has moved. You better you better pay attention and start investing that money because what you thought it that's not gonna work no more. That dog ain't gonna hunt no more. And that's what people are learning right now. They're learning, oh, hmm. Oh no, I better start investing, you know. Hey, stuff that they should have been doing. Bill Clinton gave China factory jobs. Yep. This is being addressed in the next. Okay. Drop 16. We'll talk about it another day. Thank you, BP Thomas Trucking, for the $25 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel and making it what it is. Man, BK from the Rockies. That is how. That is how the U.S. government works. There's a level where people are keeping their heads down until retirement, unfortunately. Yeah. Exactly. I would tell people to become an officer because the difference is night and day. Thank you, MAG287100. Um, every, even my whole family. When I was in college, they were like, wait. If you're going to join, wait till next year. Wait till you can be an officer. And eventually, when I kept waiting, I didn't want to do it no more. I was like, all right, I don't want to do it no more. Because then you're 21, you're not 18, you're not as flexible in your mentality. Plus, my father and my grandma died, and I was not in the mindset to join anybody's army. I'd have been in there like, I ain't got to do none of this. I got inheritance. Peace out. I think that Byron Allen stands a good chance because I don't think these justices want to be remembered as the ones who reversed 16 Civil Rights Act of 1866. Of course, you lie. That's the that's the big part. Because the way the law works now is a president. If they if they set a precedence, again, I'm sorry, I got a speech impediment. Then everything else is overturned. Like the next person coming through will sue, will say the same thing. Well, they overturned it. The Supreme Court overturned it. <laughs> Apple Max, my first time here, my bank member. Yeah, I think I'm going to figure out how to do some kind of watch party in Austin. I think that's what I'm going to do. If I can do them in two areas, I can do it in Houston and Austin, that's what I'll do. So that's something I'm thinking on. Oh, for sure. Bullet trains, all this other stuff. I mm. <laughs> me I wear a t-shirt and paper mo. I'm telling you, because literally last year, the number two people I remember from last year were four or three different people, three different groups who wore t-shirts. They made their staff come in t-shirts and they took a picture at 10X. And it was like, oh, who's that? Like, and what he was selling was he was a wholesaler. I had like 10, 10, 12 of these people all in wholesale and t shirts. It was great. I was like, what company is that? <laughs> Thank you, Jessica Hicks. Social proof. Yes, I would tell you to go social proof. That was really good because each person got on stage and told you how they exactly did it um, if you were there to listen. Now, if it's more neat next year, I think it'll be good too.
Uh, just look at the movie The Banker. It has Samuel L. Jackson and it has the dude from Avengers and the Black Eye Falcon or whatever. Um, it's going to be good. It basically shows you how two black businessmen put their white friend as their representative, as the actual buyer, because it wasn't against the law then. After they did this, it became against the law. And he went and bought the banks as them. But nobody realized, wait a minute, two black men on this? This is a white guy showing up. So again, and they had to teach this poor white guy how to act like a rich white guy. I mean, it's, it's, kind of, it's going to have some comedy and it's going to have some good in it. It's worth it. It's worth seeing it, for real. So again, I've been on an hour and 10 minutes. It's been way long. I apologize. But again, Byron Allen, this is hard work and proximity factor. I, I know y'all think I'm being like overly dramatic about the proximity factor, but you go to conferences, you go to chamber of commerce events, you start going there, you see how like you, you see these girls then got married to somebody. You'd be like, how she get married to him? Proximity factor, proximity factor. How close are you to somebody who's doing well? That's all I'm telling you. I have 2,000 channels, never heard of the movie. It's just coming out. Like, I literally just saw the ads for it last, yesterday, like three days ago, when I went to go see Terminator. I was like, what is this? Wait, wait a minute. They showed Harriet, of course, and then they showed the banker, and I was like, what is this banker? So that's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to hold two watch parties. If I can dominate Texas, if I can do a Austin watch party, a Dallas watch party, and a Houston watch party, I think I might do it, you guys. It'd be worth it, so... All right. Well, I got to go. I got to run. But um, again, only thing going on right now is the funding course. Um, what other thing? Oh, there'll be a dinner for people in L.A. for the Oak Oakland, Oakland folks. People who've spent money with me. I will try to message them out there. Uh, BBL. In other words, hypergamy, something black women are discouraged from doing. Listen, I'm going to say this very clearly. I don't want to get in those gender wars because there really is no gender war. It's over. Um, if you are a smart person, what you should be doing and teaching your children to do is putting themselves in the right rooms with people who are going somewhere because you can watch people's trajectory in life and it's going down. It's going down. I'm running into people who, uh, they're doing, they're on their master's degrees or doing stuff and they will be started later. They will get married in their 35 to 30 to 40. They will get married 32 to 40. They're, they're not going to get married right, right young. But these men, and I'm being careful, are going to be more valuable because they, they took the time to kind of groom themselves up. Right? So, again, if you put yourself in rooms, if you, for the next six months, I promise you, if you put yourself for the next six months at Chamber of Commerce events in your city, galas, volunteer at events, volunteer at things tied to the city for the next six months, people will know your face and associate you with that town. Just being really honest. The whole, if you can think of the word socialite, this is one of those big things, socialite. The word of socialite used to mean someone's daughter or son that was a wealthy person that they would attend all these events and galas and balls because they had what? Money and also they were the person to meet or know or they were very sociable and nice. Okay? So, so... So in that space, I am encouraging people to be a socialite. That's what I am because I am really encouraging you to do that because in this day and age, I've seen guys who literally just have two suits and they will wear them two suits every event and they are in the room. It doesn't matter. They, they get a cocktail or water in their hand. And they walk around and talk to people. It, it's a life changer. It really is. The t new Taylor Ray movie was absolutely fine. People are being overly dramatic. You have to think about, have you ever seen the movie The Butterfly Effect? When you change one part of, of a, a storyline, does it as a butterfly effect, it changes the it changes what happens. It Everything still happens. D-Day still happens, but differently. Like Sarah Connor and John Connor did save the world in that timeline, but it just pushed it off later for the future. That's all. And so people get mad because they did the movie right it, but you have to think of it as the butterfly effect. If you do one thing or mess up one character, then it will change everything else. And so that's what people didn't understand. So anyways, all right, you guys, I just had to do that. Yeah, I'm thinking that's what I'm going to end up doing. So, all right, you guys, this is your girl Erica, Classic Line Blog. Later.